this is Sherilyn May and you are watching German Underground TV. You ain't never turn a honey to your food stamps in the 70 dollars. The nigga you in struggle and no neck, no neck. Why chill around these plugs with no power? Training all that juice up on nuts on the trunk tower. Sending all these loops in your trap from the cat dead. And all these new troops are terrorists in the rap game. I see a lot of fake in your hate, I'ma shake you. That's why I put the bait in my way before I break you. I'm putting all this time on some shit that's timeless. They still in all my lines, but I gotta show kindness. Hold on, you I don't bail or I don't tell. Don't you think as niggas is famous that they won't squeal? Don't you blink when niggas is aiming that'll get you killed? Don't you think them niggas is playing if that's not your field? You better run for it or get the bullets and gun for it. Unless you got the brains and the wits and the fun for it. They hit you with the tap. You pay the audit. They ain't your cup of tea. Oh well, you pour the water and got burned. Arresting all our black power. Knife to the chest, put the test out black power. Strip us to the vest, put the rest out black power. Get out the projects. APS Studios in South Melbourne. We're gonna go check out a session with Charlie Williams and George, the producer. Let's check it out. Charlie. Hey, what's up, bro? Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? I'm here for this interview, man. Come on in. That's George, the producer. Hey, DJC, yeah, how are you, man? How you been, man? Nice. Yeah, it's been a while. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, thanks. Take a seat, take a seat. Yeah, so with the song Women, um, it took us to to Russia and Moscow, and um, with this ma massive uh, pop star in Russia called Emin, and he basically took us over to where he's from, Azerbaijan. And man, this crowd was massive. I think there was between 15,000 people there, 15 to 18. And um, I just remember walking on stage, seeing this massive crowd. I'm like, okay, it's it's real. So um, before the music got started, I couldn't hear my headset, and the music's playing, and I can't hear shit. And I, I see Emin tapping along, so I'm like, okay, I know that I know when we're gonna start. Bang! And I fluked it. I seriously fluked starting the song, and that was. That was a relief for me because I didn't want to look like an idiot on, on stage in front of all these people and um, oh man it was a lot of fun, it was so much fun being up there and got to tour through uh, Azerbaijan, obviously Moscow, Moscow was a massive one as well, I think there was about 10,000 people in front there that we got to perform in front of. Man you name it, we went all over Europe, um, it's hard to come up with one of the states out of my head but yeah, no, that was a lot of fun, a lot of fun, a lot of highlights. What works for you doesn't work for me. Stop telling me how to love, live and breathe. I'm suffocating, so let me go. I'll find my dream girl on my own. You said you care, just trying to help me. You said it sounds just like a fairy tale, but you're always in my way. I don't care if she's brown, black, or white. I don't care. Yeah, my first break was uh, with with Pit Andre doing Get Get Down on It, and that's where I met Chris. Apostolides, who is who is part of the APO Shout team. Shout out here, to Chris. Who is currently overseas, yeah. enjoying uh, uh, energy enjoying transfer, the sun, enjoying the sun. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so um, through that project, we um, uh, we all we all got to, got to get to know each other and work. And from that, we did um, our first major um, record, which was Jackie with with Joanne, and um, and that that hit number three and won a scenario award. So that was quite of a big experience at the time. It was huge, man. Yeah. Um, and that opened up the doors for many other um, uh, artists to come in. He was fearless. He was, a, he, was a, he was a guy with fearless, no rules, and just, just went with his heart. And that got him where, he, where, where it got him. It actually he actually taught us the same philosophy yeah. that fear nothing and you'll get what you want. And he showed that in his breaking days. We sort of found a, an old clip of him, uh, I think it was on Countdown back in the days, mm. of him uh, 
<laughs> doing, yeah, his, yeah. doing his magic. He was uh, good. I he was actually. He was, he was, he was actually. Way he apparently, the most memorable story was the one where he actually said he he jumped off um, uh, one of those um, theaters. So he got up on the stage, uh, side stage, and he just jumped, swinging on the chandelier, all the way onto the onto the yeah, that actual was so spontaneous man. <laughs> <laughs> just... Onto the stage and landed perfectly. <laughs> We love you, Chris. Show. You're a legend. Crazy, You're out there, but we love you, mate. And you're here in spirit. Yes. Jamming Underground TV, baby. Part two. You know we do it. Condorito, James Hollands, The Mouse's Grouse, APS Studios. Check it out, y'all. I run, I run, I run, I run. This race to win. NMG coming back at you. Probably 1990 when you guys did a show at Billboard. For Black is Black, I think it was, and you yeah, guys were doing Guy, Spend the Night, and Groove Me. That's right. Phenomenal back there. It's actually up on my YouTube channel, so yeah. if you want to check out my YouTube channel. But uh, tell us about what you've been up to, what you're doing. Okay, so, like you mentioned, back in the 90s, you know, these young young blokes, Peebo, my uncle, Stevie, my cousin, thrown into thrown into the musical Deep End by um, my late Auntie Teresa from Jabalani, and she said, boys, go and do it. So um, yeah, we did our KPS thing, singing, dancing, and we got the band. And so as time has gone on, you live life, and you get married, and you have kids, and all the rest. So KPS got a bit quiet, but got a, a regular thing happening now once a month down in um, Clayton, actually coming up this Friday. Yeah, where was that? Um, the the room's called the library. Yeah. It's just downstairs from the reception, the grand reception there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm talking to the, the manager there, and we're going to get the room on the on the map. Get KPS you know, gigging and out there again and just for just for the patrons to come down. There's a lot of love for funk and R and B in the southeast. So we thought a good idea. So it's our second one on Thursday on Friday, this this Friday coming up. And we're in third. June. We're in uh, July twenty eighteen, so just people can know where to find you and stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. So um yeah this on, on on Facebook we just got a KPS page. Now I went to, to Casablanca as, as an underage about eighty four and the South Africans were running the Melbourne club scene back then. They were, yes. they were running the fun clubs yes. and they were doing the bus stop and all these wild dances way yeah. before anybody else brought it to Melbourne, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they had that funny kind of ballroom, I don't know, was it the ballroom style dancing in the, in the fun clubs, in the R&B clubs? Yeah, so... Sort of fusion type thing? Yeah, they call, they call, they call it jazzing. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, that blew me away. I was a little really kid, slick. you know? It's really slick and yeah. smooth and... There's a different flavour, whether you're from Cape Town, from Durban, but it's all mm. beautiful, you know. Because not many people yeah. know the, the history of the South African musicians and what they brought to Melbourne. I mean, we had Jabalani, we yeah. had you guys, so many talented cats. And, you know, first time I've heard Keith Sweat was Billboard, 1988. That was Abby singing, yeah. I want her. And I, yeah. I was a little b-boy, you know, with that's Chrissy right. and all them. That's right. And that's what got me into R&B, you know. Like, Mm. That's where you know when it went into the R&B scene and became a DJ. But mm. you actually related to um, the Jabalani guys. Tell us about that. Yeah, so that's um, my mum's brothers and sisters. Okay, so Pibo and KPS, my uncle, is the youngest of the family. So that's my mum's youngest brother. And um, when you were listening to them to do up at doing Awana in 88, 89, I was probably just flying over on the plane. Yeah. So of the three of us. Kibo and Stevie, and I was the last one to arrive. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so, jump the line in. Guys, don't forget to get Jesse Maz's new single, Don't Waste Your Love On Me, on Spotify, iTunes, and Google Play. You don't want to be Cheryl and May, and you are watching German Underground TV. And today we have a special guest called Jesse Maz. Welcome, Jesse. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. So, tell us about yourself. Um, yeah, so I am an up-and-coming artist um, in the genre of soul and R&B, yep. um, and I'm originally from New Zealand, so I've grown up here, and um, yep. so a lot of my influences from Michael Carlin's side comes through in my music, wow. so yeah, so now I've been doing music, um, I guess, professionally now for two years, yep. um, and finally launched my um, single, yep. um, and looking to release a lot more music with a lot of my influences. And How interesting. Yeah. Yes. So, right, so what made you want to start music? Um, well, music's always been in my life. Yep. Um, you know, growing up, we were listening to music all our lives, 
um, and then I hung out with a few friends out of high school um, who were more into music heavily and they said hey you can you know carry a tune mm -hmm. so why don't we get you in and um, you know do some songs and things and from there it kind of the interest kind of built um, started doing small gigs here and there and then I was like oh I really like this and then um, it just kind of started off as a joke as oh what if you know we named you Jesse Maz and I was like no nah, no one will come and watch me but <laughs> um, here we are I'm yeah. selling out venues and stuff that's so, so that's pretty exciting and um, just yeah the music support um, in Melbourne is pretty amazing and even yep. around the world and just people tuning in is always really quite wonderful so um, I'm now just eager to just bring out more music and have a yeah see if people like it. <laughs> Tell us how everything's been going with your transition in the Cash Empire. How's everything going? I believe you just met you just met with potential management and mentors and everything's coming along. How's how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm actually feeling really great about it. It's real positive vibes. I'm loving the management and everything around there and Cash Empire itself has just been a great um experience, especially in the studio. I've been working on some tracks and getting stuck into it, so that's been a really good experience. What do you see yourself in the next possibly year? Like, I'll be honest, like, um, might be a biased view, but um, as CEO of Cash Empire, I believe you're going to do great things, and um, not only are you going to do great things for yourself and your family and those that believe in you, I believe you're going to be a great asset to Cash Empire. But um, just for yourself, what do you see yourself? Where do I see myself? Well, hopefully performing in front of an audience that enjoys and loves my music and can get a bit of help or a bit of light and love from my music, really. Um, yeah. That's all you can hope for. That's all you can want. That's the beauty of music. Like, it just shows, like, no matter what, like, because before an artist, I was a fan and when I listen to music, I feel inspired. Like I used to listen to music and feel good just to know that there's somebody out there going through what I'm going through. And you're obviously going down the right path. You're obviously going down the same track. Your music will definitely inspire a lot of people out there. You, you will definitely do great things. And Kimmy, Kimberly J. <laughs> yeah. Welcome aboard Cash Empire. It's good to be here. Underground TV, 30 years strong baby, it's Condorito, it's the middle of winter, you know how we do. We're in the icebox here, icebox number two, James Holland style. I'm joined with Hip Hop Royalty. Check this out, man. Look, we've got Pac Diesel here from AKA Brothers. We've got Chrissy, we've got Ron in the house. Now, all these cats used to frequent my radio show in the late 80s, early 90s, and, and Chrissy went on to take over the show and did Step Into the AM. Yeah. But we, we go way back, Chrissy, to mid 80s like I think the Run DMC concert you were yeah. wearing a t-shirt and I rapped on stage with yeah, uh, Scratch and all that yeah. and um but yeah uh, welcome to German Underground TV and I'll oh, start with Pat because he's the legend uh, he's the pioneer of hip-hop in Australia if you don't know him look him up on Facebook that's Pat Diesel from AKA Brothers baby you know how we do it Pat tell us about yourself what you've been doing man uh, I built a studio with Raid uh, in this factory uh, it's just about ready to get going again. Was up and running, got dismantled uh, for a while. Uh, just keen to get back into the studio, redo some vocals. Um, getting busy with the machine. Yeah. It's good, hands on. Yeah. Uh, like Escapade says, we got unfinished business. Yeah, that's it. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to come back and drop some vinyl. And. Um, uh uh, you also mentioned something about a Sydney trip. You went over to Sydney, hung out with some cats over there and checked out some live shows and stuff. Yeah, I was um, Dicey, my brother. Uh, we talk like weekly basis sort of thing. I went there about six weeks ago, just hung out with Dicey for a week. Uh, yeah, we went to Peace Murph, 
uh, he had a show on. That was good. I uh, heard good things about him. Deathwish cast pretty much was saying, yeah, he's a positive sort of influence now. He's doing good things. Um, very, uh, what do you call it, like, um, proactive. And um, it's not many dudes like that no more. And uh, just a refreshing input to the scene. And uh, they're backing him up 100%. And uh, the dude can flow, man. He's got mad skills. Yeah. Big ups. You were the first hip hop cat to do dancehall, from what I remember. You were doing dancehall stuff ages ago, eighties, late eighties, and stuff. Oh yeah, I was into uh, you know like Just Ice as well, and yeah. sort of you know he yeah. was he was a bouncer at a dancehall club. That's how he got into it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I always loved my reggae, still do. Yeah. You're also a funny cat because I remember you coming on to Three Triple R or something in the late eighties with with Jim and Lamb. I was funk and. Um, you crack a few jokes here and there. <laughs> I want to put some of that stuff up online, man, because yeah, you're a funny I'm cat. Good, I'm I'm you look serious and all, but you, uh, you're a funny dude, man. I like to crack jokes, especially if um, stage you got technical difficulties, and they're going to happen. You yeah. can't turn around and look at the DJ and put it on him because it's not his fault. And yeah. It just looks amateur as well, so mm. just bust into a joke or something, man. Mm. Yeah. Um, so what are you listening to at the moment? What sort of stuff are you listening to? Oh, it's all mixed CDs from uh, Inner Dangerous, his reggae CD, Old School Brethren. Um, oh, who I'm listening to? Still old school artists too, like Luciano, um, uh, Natural Black, uh, Whiskey, uh, Protege, um, Morgan Heritage. Yeah, it's all happening. Um, I don't know, I kind of don't really listen to much hip hop. I, I never really have at home. Um, artists used to come from interstate and after hearing reggae for a couple of hours, like, oh, dude, you got any hip hop? Uh, I'll search through some mix it is and I'll end up finding something. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, now, I was telling you when I interviewed you last week that I've got a photo of you doing a windmill with your hands behind your back at some battle at oh, Noble yeah. Park. Around 87, you and Ransom were in one room and we were in the other hall and the Pills Posse came and just battled us during his birthday party, you know? And I've got a few photos of you and Esk and a couple of other cats. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send it to you. But you were a breaker as well, yeah? You were... Yeah, yeah, everyone pretty much started out, you know, breaking and, yeah. Well done, mate. Well, tell us where we can find you and people can find you online and stuff, track you down. Um, yeah, I'm on Facebook, Pack Diesel. Uh, what do I look like there? Uh, there's two pack diesels. I tried to befriend the other one. What's up, man? How come you don't want to be friends? With a real pack diesel, please stand up. <laughs> I changed my name. It's legit my name from 10 years ago or something, yeah? Just did a name change. It was easier that way. Um, you see me on my downhill gear, on my downhill bike, that's me. Um, I'm on Insta, pack diesel 31. Uh, it's mostly custom Lego builds on there. Yeah. Yeah, I love my Lego, so put all the Lego on there. Yeah. Got a lot of followers. Yeah. You and Buller gave me my name, DJ Condorito, from uh, about 88 uh, on, on CR. Oh, um, yeah. That was a funny one. Because <laughs> a lot of people don't know the history of that name. Uh, uh, you... Yeah, Escapone had this comic book, uh, Condorito. And it's basically a condor. And, and he gets up to mischief, and yeah, that's Condorito. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we just. It was Esky that pretty much yeah. said that the first time. Because I go to Esky's house and his mum would be like, Hey, Paquito! You know? Hey. And she'd be whistling Breaker's Revenge and that. Yeah, it was good. It was good old days. Yeah. Thanks for joining us on German Underground TV, man. Oh, man. Like pleasure said, being Can't here, wait man. to hear your stuff, man. I'm serious. I'm for real. Bump, um, some new stuff, recording, and uh, yeah, making the beats. It's all happening. Yeah. Well, Chrissy, you know, thanks for joining us as well. Chrissy, uh, step into the AM. Yeah. And you were down with Graf and you were down with Breaking. And uh, yeah. so you've been around for a while. You're a true B-girl. Yes. So tell us about what you've been up to and stuff. Wow. I mean, like I started back in the late 80s. So I was, I mean, sorry, probably mid 80s. I, I just loved, like, um, breaking and I loved all the movies that came out at the time, Beach Street, Breakdance, Breaking and Entering, just but um, had such, I didn't know it was going to have such a big influence in my life and just take me on such a amazing journey right up until now but now I still DJ every mm. now and then and 
I'm just trying to think. Last gift that I did. Oh wow! I got to. I mean, I've been like privileged. Like every now and then, I get asked to do DJ support, and last one was with Big Daddy Kane. Oh, so yeah. that was yeah, huge. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Now a, lo a lot of people don't know this, so let's just clear this up, okay? Because you know I love you and everything, but the step into the AM show yeah. actually was the beats and ting show that yes. i did so progress it was a progression yeah so the station manager came up to me and said we want chrissy to do the hip-hop show and i said yeah cool no worries i think i trained you and then i yeah, went off and yeah. started djing full time and did a wednesday night show or something but yeah. the original hip-hop show was beats and tings and that's there was it. 40 dudes in the old PBS studio breaking, there was linos, yes. we were doing 12 to 8 a.m. shows, yes. dudes drinking, it was uh, always graph, uh, it was crazy. just chaos, and yeah. those were the days, you know, I'd get in trouble with what Eskinen was saying on air all the time, And yeah. um, but those were the days of PBS from 90 to about 93, 94, it was just bonkers, man. Yeah, thank goodness there was no... CCTV. No. <laughs> Johnny Jewel, Jewel would rock up with billiards and he'd just, Tim and Terry would be doing head spins in the foyer and dudes oh, doing breaking in the actual studio. It was, it was full on. It was just crazy. We'd have riders like taking yeah. up in the toilet, yeah. hallway. Like it was just. Yeah. And I got in so much trouble. And, yeah. yeah. Um, but a lot of fun. And this is, you know, where just, so, you know, so many MCs like, you know, paved the way for. Yeah. You know all these like current you know hip hop cats and yeah. that like it all you know I think started you know with PBS, yeah. 3CR, Triple. You know, yeah. and crazy yeah. love to every DJ who did public radio because you don't get paid for it, mm, and absolutely. you put a lot of time and effort into it. And mm. you know, props to everyone who did public radio. And Ron, you were you were a regular. And used to yeah. come in to peeps all the time all and the time. got photos and stuff. PBS, you yeah. and Beaker and all those old yeah, guys. Right. Yeah. Who else rolled with you guys? Who, who were the uh, other crews uh, we back were, then? Uh, there was uh, Code of Ethics, which was Pluto and Blackout. Yeah. Uh, as one crew. Fast faces are dead. Yeah, Raf Boogie, Pace, yeah. R.O.P. Pace. Yeah, Love right. you, mate. Yeah, respect. Mm. And uh, yeah, it's a whole bunch of cats like that. Then you know came people like. Uh, Brad Strutt and Trem One and all those came up after that as well. Um, yeah, a whole bunch of crews. Oh, I can't forget PMP, you know, they were big back in the beginning, you know, and big part of it. So, uh, yeah, lots of crews like that. Those are crazy times. Yeah, well, where can we find you, Chrissy, on, on Facebook? If yeah. you, do you have a profile you want to? Share with us? Um, I don't have, I, no, I'm just, just under Chrissy, my name, all right. Chrissy Conroy. Yeah. <laughs> That's me. Cool. Yeah. You know, thanks for joining us again, German Underground TV. I'm going to rip the old school cats. Mm. I, no, uh, we, we, uh, people had a go at me last, because the first episode there was, wasn't really much old school yeah. uh, content, but, yeah. you know, we, we couldn't get clearance of a lot of stuff. So, um, but yeah, great chatting to you guys, and, you know, thanks for coming in and stuff. And, I want to hear. Yeah, oh, man, thank you so much. Yeah, love yeah, you right so much. Yeah, right back at you, man. For all your nah. support, all over the, you know, for oh, the Oh, without years. you guys, you know what I mean? Us MCs, we wouldn't have even been heard half the time. Like, you know, like, you guys gave us our space to, to get out well, there. Well, that, that's why I do it. You know, that's why I got back on air. And you guys pioneered as DJs and, and, you know, for radio gave hip hop a voice, you know, like. Mm. Yeah, that's artist respect. Well, that's got to be it. The next project is going to be yeah. Pax album or EP release. That's yeah. what's going to be. That's what we, we're doing. But thanks for joining us again, German Underground TV, baby. Thirty years strong. You know we do. Yeah. Yeah. Yay! Yay! Into the house. Woo! Cheers, <laughs> DJ Condorito, middle of winter here, eighty-nine point nine FM. It's Northwest FM in Hadfield. And we're joined by legendary DJ Funk, Master Vinny. What's up, Vinny? Hey, bro. Now, this guy's a bit of an inspiration because uh, he's actually still DJing. You're doing your club gigs and yeah. you've got Kiss FM. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about Kiss FM a little bit later. But you've got a, a special modified sort of DJ setup where you yeah. have a special crossfader. Yeah. And you program your songs into that fader and you actually mix stuff. Yeah, they right. Yeah. Excellent. Now, I've been playing some of your remixes outstanding and some oh, of the fun stuff that you've done, so well done, mate. Yeah, okay. And, you know, we've got a bit of a questionnaire here with some questions and answers we'll go into in a sec, but thanks for joining us on Jam and Underground TV. You are a true inspiration, dude. I love you, yeah, mate. Yeah, mate. And you've yeah. been listening to the show, the Jam and Show, for like 25 years. Yeah, man. So a little bit more. Well yeah. done, mate. Well done. 
So we're chatting with legendary funk master Vinny um, here on Jammin' Underground TV and obviously he has a, a bit of a disability, he's non-verbal but don't let that fool you man, this guy's got skills, he's got funk in his veins. So I've got some questions and some answers here that we sent him pre this interview. Uh, so tell us about your background and when you started DJing Vinny. Uh, I guess it was back in my university days when I first started play, um, doing paid gigs, working three nights a week and then going out on Sundays to see CDB and hanging out with you guys, uh, trying to uh, mince it up with what I heard. Uh, I can also remember a story that my uncle always told me where not as a nine-year-old kid, um, a nine-year-old kid started DJing at a family function, asking guests for requests and stuff like that, like Abba and Neil Diamond and Elvis. So I kind of knew early on that I wanted to be a DJ, but I didn't know in what capacity um, we're in radio or live acts. Uh, second question is, tell us about your musical influences. And this is Vinny's reply. Uh, everything from Prince to disco. I love Joey Negro stuff, like the early 80s, awesome disco kind of stuff. Uh, Mac Band, SOS Band, Chic, Teddy, Teddy Riley, yeah! Um, question number three, uh, where do you currently DJ, including your radio shows? Uh, he's on KISS FM, Tuesdays at 9am until 10.30. That's every Tuesday on KISS FM in Melbourne. That's kissfm.com.au. And tell us where people can find you online. So if you want to catch Vinny and his radio show on some of his mixes, uh, you can go to mixcloud.com happy radio show, or you can just search for happy radio show on mixcloud.com. Thanks for joining us, mate. You are a true inspiration. You're a true legend. And thanks for joining us on Jam and Underground TV, mate. Love you, mate. You're the best. Right. Yeah! Yeah! What's up, guys? This is Arima J. Check out Jammin' Underground TV. What you say, man? I need everybody to the dance floor on this one. Come on! Right now. Right now. Uh, we're gonna make you dance, man. All right. Where's the Bronx? Where's, Where's Harlem? It's real Harlem. track. I don't want Come no on. problem. Boogie Black! Boogie Black! Where's Brooklyn? Boogie Black. Where's Brooklyn? Brooklyn. Ladies scream if you think you're good right. looking. Come on. Put your drinks up. Take your shoes off. Come on. Super on. tracks. This is Yo. what we do, y'all. Who you know make the club rock? Real tracks. I'ma ride it I'm out to the beat track. The surgeon, the surgeon, the surgeon, the surgeon. Oh yeah. I need my dancers only. Right. Who put the party in the frenzy? So meet me on the floor where the ladies be. Long as the beat keep going, the tracks keep flowing, the drinks keep flowing. Let me see some footwork. Come on. Let me see some footwork. What? Come on. Let me see some footwork. Come on. Scott. Let me see some footwork. Good job.